So since I'm snowed in because I decided to visit the North, I'm just going to give you my top 10 worst albums of 2017 for this year. So, yep. So let's start out with number 10, which is, of course, Boosie Badass, his newest album, Boo Pock, which sounds like the haunting of Machiavelli's ghost. But sadly, it doesn't have the lit lyrical skill of Machiavelli's ghost. Of course, if you want to hear an album about how he pisses blood and how he got his young child laid, then of course, check out this album. It is cringy, a little bit over long like this is a very long album it's like one hour in two minutes and this album proves that cancer can be contagious because it gave my ears cancer it's a very horrible album and i expect better and this is one of like three comeback albums that will be on this list so yeah we're starting off strong i should say now, I just like to have a interlude right here and talk about my number nine pick. Now, I just like to talk about boredom in music. And I'm okay with an artist sounding bored when he's like recording music. I'm a fan of Sun Kill Moon and I'm a fan of 21 Savage. I'm also a fan of people like Selena Gomez. So she's pretty cool. So, yeah, I'm pretty cool with artists sounding bored when they're recording music. But it can go a little bit too far, and that's why we have this next entry. Now, we have a band called Mission, Left Without the End. So, hey, and this is a horrible band. This is also, they make horrible songs. Horrible, generic, boring songs that makes me want to go to sleep. Now, I also like to add that I'm a fan of Miguel's newest album, and many people said that it's a little bit too relaxed. I can believe that, but you want to hear about too relaxed. Listen to this band. This, this band is horrible. Their song, Middle Finger, where they talk in discoscado flow, makes me want to get a pillow. Like, jeez. This... This, I, there's nothing really interesting to say about this band. They're what, have you ever asked yourself, what if the chain smokers, instead of being bubbly teens, decided to be senior citizens? This is what you would get. This is, this is overall a pretty bad band, bad album, and it kind of sucks. Their album is called uh, Lonelier, I think. I don't, I don't really care. I can't really even remember the album. It's trash. Um, I would never listen to this band ever again. And it's not that they're boring because boring music can sometimes work if you're building up like an aura around it. Like 21 Savage, he does his little slow flow because he's a savage he's building up this cold-blooded demeanor sun kill moon they do their little thing where he just does this like little talking and stuff mostly because they have killer instrumentals and he talks about his life which is very interesting to me but these people they have nothing interesting to say they're rebels without a cause and they suck now, my number eight pick is, of course, Lil Wayne's The Dedication 6. Now, I heard this album, and now it not only ruined my Christmas because it it was um, released on Christmas, but I'm now on Birdman's side. Hold back all his albums because this mixtape is trash. It has very much trash features, especially anything named Baby. Lil Wayne tries to replace Baby, of course, with some a uh, bunch of fuckboys like Hood Baby and who's the other Baby? Baby G. And their features are horrible. And, of course, Lil Wayne said that whole rape line, which all these people who pretty much... I uh, disliked my video. I think it was like one or two. Still couldn't explain that rape line. So, hey. So, I guess whatever. And, of course, all the lines about white supremacy and all that bull crap. 
And of course, the whole snort that KKK line. Nobody can explain that fuckery. So, hey. And, you know, this album kind of ruined a lot of songs that I liked. So, I can't really explain it. So, that's all I have to say. And, of course, this gratuitive art. I like Nirvana. Don't ruin Nirvana's art, I just like to say. And all these damn tattoos. I mean, hey. But yeah, the album was trash. I mean, the mixtape was trash. Whatever. Mixtape, album, same difference. But yeah, just didn't like it. All right, my number seven pick is, of course, Eminem Revival. Now, I have a theory of why Eminem didn't let 2 Chains um, on this album. It's because Eminem took a, book, a peek at 2 Chains rap book and decided to steal all his punchlines because... It has some cringy punchlines, like the line about heavy duty, that was just trash. The line about wind chimes, I mean, just horrible, horrible, horrible. And he has a line about grabbing pussy, and he, that's the only thing that he and Trump agrees with. Just all out horrible. And, of course, this album documents of how Eminem was so sorry, starting with the whole walk on water where he was sorry that he's not meeting up with his expectations. And he have this uh, song where Eminem was sorry about, like the song Bad Husband, where he was sorry about how he used to abuse Kim, all that trash. I mean, just sorry after sorry after sorry. And of course, he have that a whole song, Untouchable, where he was sorry about being white. Just Eminem being sorry sorry about this album and of course this album takes heavily influence from damn with the whole repeating theme and the repeating and going back and you know damn it i listened to like the um back of this album like the ending of this album and i was like getting damn flashbacks like oh man this guy's taking too much influence from kendrick oh lord jeez you know this album should be called Retiree. I mean, this album is called Revival. After this, I'm skeptical Eminem's um, career would a actually have a survival. Like, damn, this is just bad. This is a bad album. Just very much. And I saw that Anthony put this as number two. I wouldn't go this far. I mean, it's a pretty okay album impassable album by the standards of the trash that everybody else is putting out but damn this is still a bad album uh, it's just trash now here's the ironic thing now Eminem is a white boy who takes too much influence from Kendrick Lamar in his album which of course was Revival. And the next person is a white boy who definitely takes too much influence from Kendrick Lamar in his album. And that guy is Logic. Now, Logic Everybody album was originally called Afro Aryan or something like that. And the whole concept was focusing on the whole idea of him being half black and half white. And he didn't let an album named everybody stop him from focusing on that whole idea because literally this album, it does. It just mostly focuses on him being black and white. It doesn't mention everybody. It doesn't mention yellow skin people. It doesn't mention Pacific Islanders. It doesn't mention Brazilians. It doesn't mention not a damn person except for people who are black and white. Of course, he doesn't, he, he says black power, but he doesn't say white power. He doesn't say yellow power, brown power, just nothing. It's just, he decided the only thing that changed about this album conception wise is the title. He should have kept it to Afro Aryan. That would make more sense because of course this album is pretty much basically trash when it comes to the concept of reporting on everybody just like the u.s census but yeah and also one of the things i like to point out is one of his most popular um songs the suicide hotline song it's actually a contradiction when you listen to a song like ink block where juicy j says 
to kill yourself. So Logic didn't have the foresight to say, hey, we're going to have an anti-suicide track, but first we're going to have Juicy J saying, kill yourself, you know, to motivate people to do suicide. This was a bad idea as a concept of the album. It's very bloated with the whole interludes from Dice Clay and him stealing from the egg by some guy i forgot i mean this was overall a pretty bad album and it this album was a failure he should have stuck to just whatever he was rapping about like being flashy in cars and stuff like that i mean come on this was a very bad idea as an album now of course let's talk about the holidays now the holidays used to have a pure and honest agenda spreading the love of Christ, but now it have become a corporate shield and all about consumerism. And what more can represent that than Litmus by Team 10 and Jake Paul. Now, this was a horrible, horrible album, and it was just a shield for him to sell his merch and corporately sell out, and it just full of cringy lyrics and of course, this is the first but not the only YouTuber that is on this list. And by golly, this was a horrible, horrible album. And it's so horrible. I don't I don't have much to say about it. It's number five. And definitely this they shouldn't even call themselves Team Ten. If they wanted a zero in their whole name, the zero should be in front. Well, they would be team one, but you know what, it, it should be two zeros, now that I think of it, but overall, pretty bad album, you know, um, it was a waste of my time, and hey, now, of course, number four is Willow Smith's The First, now, you want to hear a person whose voice is so light, they sound like a wind's apprentice, then listen to Willow Smith, as I think she's trying to sound like the girl who um, who did Fast Car, which I think her name was, hold on, Tammy Champman. She's trying to sound like Tammy Champman to me, but she just overall fails with non-interesting topics that doesn't really build up to anything. And she has these little vocals and these little um, ad-libs, I guess you call it. Like, one of the worst ad-libs was the whole interlude where she was like, mm, 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 which she kind of sounded like a senior citizen having sex. But, yeah, I much liked her and overall the album Sire by Jaden Smith. I much like her, her performance in Sire where she did Blue and where she did her vocals. That were pretty awesome. But, yeah. What she did on this album, I wasn't really interested in, and it was overall trash. All right, so number three is El Gato. You know, this is a Gucci Man album. Most of it is just snippets and stuff like that. Some of it has its silly moments where he's kind of talking about how his cousin was addicted to crack and he did like a little ad lib or whatever. I thought that kind of took me out of the seriousness of um the whole track. And it's kind of like me saying, my mother have cancer. Woo! Like just, just a horrible, just a horrible little thing to do. This album is overall trash and most of it sound like sit snit bits it sounds like um what a add person would make a hip-hop album the way that it's just so non-focused and have these little short little tracks that are more like interludes that i thought was pretty much trash so yeah that's all i can say about the album now, let me start out with saying that the only reason why I know this kid is because Bart Baker did a parody on him. And I did some research because Bart Baker was slamming rice scum and stuff like that. And he mentioned him. But I listened to this kid album and it's overall trash. So, yep, I'm talking about Jacob Satorius. His, like, album, whatever, EP, 
whatever you want to call it. I accept albums, EP, mixtapes, uh, people recording a fart over like a recording and then posting it on soundtrack. I mean, uh, SoundCloud, whatever. Just whatever you want to call it. But this album's pretty horrible, especially with the highlight being um, Bingo Bingo, which actually takes a sample of... Um, a old children's nursery song and tries to flip it and i thought that was a very clever idea it's just that the way this guy keeps on the hook is just horrible and the way they like force the whole words in it just bad and it kind of goes with a theme like um you know on the album um boo pock uh, what you call it, Boosie did the same thing with the song Liar Liar on the um, album Recovery, Eminem did the same thing with Offended, and this guy's doing the same thing, except his more seemed like age appropriate, since this guy is like, what, he's like 14 or whatever, I don't know, but hey, this, the whole album was trash, and I have to say it, and many people might point out his youth, as in Maybe his music is not my age demographic, whatever. Horrible music is horrible music to me. So I have no prejudice. I'm not ageist when I come to disliking music. Um, you know, one of the most disliked um, songs I have heard in my life is, you know, Dora the Explorer. And I watched her as a kid and I was like, no, 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 no. This is bad. This is bad. So, hey. Now, dishonorable mentions before I get to number one is, of course, X, Gorillas, and Train. You know, for um, Gorillas, I dislike that they actually censored all the Donald Trump references instead of like re recording them or making the rappers change their verses or whatever. I thought that that was very, a little bit cowardice. Train, of course, I dislike their newest album because it's pretty dull and boring. Um, and X, of course, I disliked it because this guy stole a lot of songs from his contemporaries, especially Shape of You. That sounds like a Sia track to me. But hey. Now, my number one pick for 2017's worst album of the year is, of course, Teenage Emotions by Little Yachty. Now, you must ask yourself, what if Logic instead of failing at explaining the complicated messages and relations of being a race in this world, decided to tackle being a particular age group in this world and being alienated and isolated from your friends and peers in the whole world. That would be what Little Yachty did, except failing. Now, of course, you see the cover, and this cover shows a lot of uniqueness and diversity. It shows somebody smoking. It shows somebody with some type of skin disease. It shows like a golf chick. It shows a fat chick. It shows two gay guys. And it shows a brother with his natural hair. And it shows an albino. None of these people are being touched in the messaging of this album. They're just used as props to sell the album. The album is over bloated and the album is very vain. The album is very, very vain. And the only references to being a teenager or being a youth in general is when he's talking about it sexually. And he's not even talking about being a teenager. He's talking about being a kid with his references to girls sucking his dick like a baby bottle with his references to, well, this have nothing to do with um, being a kid, but he referenced incest. I mean, just overall, this disgusting. This was an overall disgusting album, a bloated, disgusting album, which I did not care about. It was the worst album of the year, and it's just that. It was... I have nothing else to say about it. And this album could have possibly caused Joe Button's job. And it caused them to diss Joe Button on that ice tray, which I thought was pretty awesome. But yeah, worst album of the year. Um, that's all. Now, if you have 
If you have any worst albums that you would like to point out, put it in the comment section. I would love to hear it. Please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, do all that jive, and I'm out, guys. Have a nice day, and have a safe trip home.